What is going on everybody, welcome back to the Civilization 5 AI only Atlantis Europa battle. It's looking great, it's looking very good and interesting at the moment. Um, probably going to have the most close game so far, although it's only been 150 turns. And most close is definitely broken English, but apart from that, that was good. But yeah, at the moment no one's, no one's running away with it, which is something that happens a lot. I mean, there's a few civs doing fairly well, but I wouldn't say they're... You know, I wouldn't say they're easily winning. For example, Egypt are doing pretty well, but this is pretty scary. Although Egypt now has musketmen, so maybe a bit less scary. And Rome has lost city to Austria and... Oh wait, Rome took it back and then Austria retook it again. Sorry, got confused there. Yeah, mate, this would be really good if Austria could like, hold on to this. Maybe grab another city, I don't know. It's not really the best city in the world. And if they could take Venice, that would be... That'd be really good. Obviously, 21 population. It's going to be very nice for whoever gets in. At the moment, it seems Rome's going to struggle. Although they might come back. They only lost one city. But yeah, if Rome struggles, France and the Netherlands, it's probably too difficult for them, at least early game, to come around here and take it. Definitely the Netherlands. Although they're trying, by the looks of things, to do something. And again, for France, just too many mountains. So they're probably safe from that, that aspect, I think. Okay, this is France. I thought that might have been the UK. I think they're all at war with Spain. Oh no, they're all at war with France, I think. They're all at war with somebody. It doesn't matter if the cities aren't falling. It's a bit early. It's early in the series. It's There's going to be lots of wars that don't really lead to anything. Still nothing going on up here, apart from some ostriches running around. Some plumed nomads. That sucks. They're not actually riding around on ostriches. I am disappointed now. Or emus, whatever you prefer. I don't know, is there a difference? Is it just a place thing? Like, are they emus in Australia and ostriches elsewhere? There's another animal that's like that. Actually, I don't think it is. I think that's just a lie. I think I think there's a difference between crocodiles and alligators. It's not just one in America is different to the rest. But I might be wrong. But I think maybe one's only found in America, which is why I got confused. Or whoever, wherever I read it, got confused or whatever, saw it, I don't know. Something to do with alligators and crocodiles. Maybe they're the same thing. Maybe not. They're pretty similar. Either way, it's not like there's a huge difference. It's not like I'm trying to say that a lion and a bear are the same. Actually, that they're they're probably not that close. But they've both got four legs and they're furry. Um, that was a bad comparison. It's like saying a lion and a snake are similar. It's not like that. They are a lot closer than that. So I guess there's that. I don't know what Lithuania is doing, by the way. They're sending their settler army of non-settlers. It's all a ruse. Everyone thinks they're about to get forward settled to death. Which would probably be worse, to be honest, if Lithuania just came and put down nine cities around you. That'd be pretty annoying. But, yeah, I don't know what they're up to. There's a lot of units just in this region, just having a party, maybe. Would make sense. There's even more. Why don't you just build normal settlers? You're having such a bad game. You have one other city, it sucks. Novgorod did fail to attack Poland, which is not good news for the rest of the world. I said no one was running away with it, but the longer Poland holds on to this, the better chance they have of doing okay. I wouldn't say they're going to run away with it. It's very, it's got, it's gotten to the point now. I'd say it's probably too late for a civ in Eastern Europe to like absolutely dominate. Like sometimes Russia does it very occasionally, but they get a really good start if they kill the Huns early on. They just take everything. And that's it. But that's probably not going to happen anymore. They're all mid sort of strength. And obviously Poland is going to be strong enough probably to stop them pushing into Europe either way. So it's going to be very interesting out in that out in that way. And Poland pretty much acting as a shield for some of the smaller Europeans. Obviously. And then some of the African and Middle Eastern civs might get quite strong over time as well. But yeah, no one's looking super scary yet. I mean, this is kind of scary, but I'm sure the Garamantes... Yeah, they could hold it off if they were here. Hopefully they will notice this is coming. I don't know how far their vision is, but hopefully they can see it. Or they're going to be in a spot of bother. Mercuria still well on their way to victory here. Just expert civ play here. It's a, it's a rare move. You give away your capital at the start, and then you can't lose it again. Think about it that way. You can only lose it once. Rome has retaken their city. It's fallen apart a bit for Austria here, hasn't it? <laughs> I mean, this isn't really good for either of them. This city's lost about 12 population, but 
Yeah, that's, that's how it's got to be. Greece has completed Alhambra, and France and the UK are racing to take Seville. As cool as it would be to see the UK take this, I think France needs to take it for their own sake. They've had some terrible games in the past, and borders. It would it would be nice for France to you know control France at the very least. I'm not asking for much. Well, at least these two are trading. <laughs> I just I can't believe that Britain just got the small part of Northern Ireland. That is like that is. It's written in the stars. Either that or the AI just knows. That's probably more likely. The AI knows. Knows what they're doing. And yeah, we should all run for our lives. The Huns have beast out with the Khazar. Nothing happened. Lithuania declared war on the Goths. I don't know if this was some sneaky surprise attack effort that's gone horribly wrong. Or they just don't know where the Goths actually are. Greece is also declared in that war. Again, I don't think Greece has much of a chance. They're doing okay. But everything's just not in the right place, and phew, France did take the city of Seville. They probably needed that more than the UK. Well, no, I don't know, but the UK probably needed it more, but it's going to look better with France having it. Oh, there we go, France. I like to see this. They're fighting back for the channel. And actually, this citadel means they're going to get quite a big chunk of it. They may actually get to control who comes in and out, kind of, the UK and the Netherlands. But I'm assuming, bold assumption that maybe France will kill the Netherlands at some point. I don't know, maybe. I think they're, they're friends at the moment, but in the future, Netherlands should be um, be uh, rather scared. Now I'm just gonna slide away very quickly. Not very quickly, my head's still here. I just, if I make like, if I fall over or something, you know what I'm doing. There we go. That's one. Yeah. Yep, second one. You're probably wondering what's going on. I'm grabbing my shoes. Because socks I put on today, not comfortable at all. So, shoes on. Ow, there we go. They're too big. That's what it is. There we go. See, and we missed nothing. So, perfect timing. And I didn't fall over. So, there's there's some, there's some definitely some wins. Ah, I forgot to put my phone on silent for today. Don't know if you heard it. Oh. Okay. I don't know. Novgorod. Can you stop taking so long? You know, kind request. Just please, please. Okay, I actually need to respond. This is bad, but you know, you you guys know, I don't do something unless it's important. Um. So yeah, let me just respond to this while nothing is going on. Look, let me just hit next turn. It's all part of the experience, you know. There we go. Right, I'm back. <laughs> There was a time thing, I had to do it before a certain amount of time. That, that was what was going on there, or it would have been too late. <laughs> so good job I did leave the sound off, might not have read it, might have missed out. But there we go, Huns versus piecing out with Russia. That is all, oh, there is something I want to ask, and this video gets the most comments normally, so probably the best place. Um, what time do you prefer? If there's only be one episode a day, which if you haven't noticed there is going to be now, just because I have exams for a few weeks. Um, do you prefer the earlier slot, which obviously ha hasn't had a video the last two times, or the late one, which is the one this just came out in? Let me know, and then I can, I mean, it doesn't matter which one it's in to me. Uh, the, obviously, it's, I just chose the late one because it gave me more time to p make a video. And I think it's the best for, like, trying to hit the UK, where I am, and North America, like, in the afternoon there. Whereas, like, f the early slot is, you know, like, morning in eastern America and I don't know, middle of the night in western America out in California. If anyone's watching from California, that is cool. I don't know if they are. Maybe. Could be. We have some viewers from some crazy places. I've seen some countries I didn't even know. Actually, I probably did know existed, but probably didn't know had a strong YouTube watching audience in show up on the list. So it's pretty cool. It's a long list as well. I think that there's not many countries left in the world we need to tick off. That's all I'm saying, which is kind of cool when you think about it. But I, it kind of makes sense. You know, we're playing a game where we just stare at a map the whole time, which I'm beginning to realize is all we ever do. So 
hopefully branch out from that at some point, do something different maybe. You guys tend to like it, so try not to move too far away. But need to make sure I don't get too too bored of it. Or not bored, but what's the word? I don't know, just burnt out I guess. I do spend a lot of time watching AI onlys. A lot of time playing Civ 5 in general. So you know, gotta try to balance it out. Which is why I play EU4 all the time, if you haven't noticed. Because it's actually probably my favourite game to let's play. I don't know, bold statement. I think it is my favourite to actually play. I'm not I'm not great at it. I think I'm better at it than Civ. Not so much that it's not so much that I'm better at it that I than I am at Civ. It's just you can play it's more like set from the start what you're supposed to do. Whereas Civ it's all random. Unless you play on a TSL map. But yeah, like in Civ when everything's random, it can be quite difficult. You need to sort of know the things and apply them. Whereas in EU four it's more country specific and I always play fairly big countries and I've still messed some of those up. Poland, Venice twice, the Mamluks, that wasn't I said that wasn't my fault. It just happened to be the one game. The one game the Ottomans didn't disintegrate in. Either side of it was my one in the middle as the Mamluks where I was right next to them. You know, Spain, Sweden, nope fine the Ottomans the strongest country in the world normally just fall apart. Which is like a one in a million Happened twice in three games. And you know, there's just the one in the middle where I played as this one big country next to them. Basically Egypt, if you have no idea what I'm on about. And they died. Or well, we died. Spoiler alert, don't watch the 27 episodes if you don't want to see me die very quickly in the last four. But if you want to check out the Sweden series we just did, if you've never seen a U4, that was really interesting. That was actually my favourite, I think. My favourite EU4, my favourite Civ 5 series, I have no idea. I think uh, the UK of 20, 2014 one was pretty good. I think the Turkey one was good, but I died. I didn't die, but we, it started to like get, turn a bit messy at the end. We just had like a random nuclear war that ruined my empire, and I just kind of felt sad that it didn't look as good as before. Yeah, I don't know what else, maybe some other Civ 5, I know what AI only is, there's so many. I can't really remember them. Like what actually happened off the specifics. Spain has pieced out with Germany, the Ottomans and the Garamantes, not much else happened that turn. Civ 6, I don't know, there isn't many to like, is there? I guess it would be the Khmer series <laughs> that's going on right now. That's pretty good. Go check that out if you want. And Hoi 4 is the Rom Romania that I played, and somehow, I don't think it was me. Like, I'm convinced it wasn't me that helped us do so well. I assume it was just the Soviet Union being absolutely amazing and me just sort of tagging along but I think I did quite well I ended up as the second strongest country I think except well obviously not including America and Japan but like the second strongest in Europe which is pretty cool so there you go there's some quick whistle stops if you're looking for some extra stuff to watch while I'm making less stuff those are the series I'd recommend bear in mind the further you go back the worse they get into if you go right to the end it, or the start, it's quite bad quality. I mean, you know, I don't know if it's great now, but it's better than it was. <laughs> it's not as grainy anymore. You won't feel like you're watching it on like a TV from the 1990s. So that's good. This g the turns have really slowed down, by the way. <laughs> In this episode, we have gone through seven. <laughs> it's 149 when we started. That's not a good sign. Novgorod seems to be one of them who are particularly going quite slow. Look at Germany, by the way. They're just being Germany. How weird. I mean, I don't get Berlin spawns in a really weird spot. So I swear the border should be like here. I don't know. Doesn't matter anyway. Still not sure where Lithuania are going. Just waltzing around. Having a good time. Anything new out here? No. You guys doing anything? No. You know what we're going to do once this turn, actually before this turns over, because it will take forever. The religion overview. Let's have a brief look. We didn't really look at it too much. And as we're at turn 150, if we look at the info addicts every 100 on the 100, 
then on the one fi on the fiftieth turn, by every hundred turn, that I don't know how to say this. Every hundred turns onwards from one fifty, we'll look at the religion. I oh, know I'm lost. This this is <laughs> it sorts them by everything but size. What? Why is there always one <laughs> at either end? I'm so lost. <laughs> Never mind. I think it's is it alpha? It's not alpha. I don't know what it is in. It's not alphabet here. It's not alphabetical. This might be the random one. Goths, one city. Venice. It's between Venice and the Songhai. Buddhism v Islam. I mean, Catholicism might make a comeback, but it's unlikely because they're near Venice. Eastern Orthodox might do okay, just because it's separate. And same for Judaism, if they don't compete with each other too much. But that's going to be it for this episode. It's been a strange episode. Just talked about, oh no, Morocco. Oh no. That's not going to end well. It is a great spot to settle. Probably not for you. But anyway, that will be it for this episode. As always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you're new to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.